Colossians is another letter of Paul, this time to the congregation at Colossae. Colossae is an ancient city in Asia Minor or modern-day Turkey. Our lesson today, Paul urges the new Christians of Colossae to practice their faith. In this context, the term practice means repeated exercise or performance of Christian doctrine and belief. As we all know, with our acceptance of Christ, we become new creatures. Our walk is guided by the Spirit of God. But Paul recognized that even though we believe, we still face temptations of the flesh. With the use of the imagery of clothing, Paul urges the Colossian congregation as new Christians to take off all sorts of evil in their relationship and put on as clothing the grace of Christ, which will lead to unity and harmony through love. Paul urges them to wear and use their faith to guide their daily lives, to guide their actions and their words. He exhorts the Colossians to cease doing all sorts of evil in their relationships and specifically points out sexual immorality, lust, evil desires, including covetousness or wanting that which belongs to another person. Now, this church had both Jews and Gentiles in it, and that often caused friction. And you could see part of that in Paul's letter. He exhorts the Colossians to stop lying to one another and engaging in malice, hatred, slander, and filthy language. He notes that God will come to judge that kind of evil. Paul reminds the church at Colossae, and he reminds us, that when we accepted Christ, we have undergone a personal change in our lives. We've adopted a new self in Christ. And even though we may have our differences with other people, Christ has unified us and broken down all barriers in our relationship. We all seek the same God through Jesus the Christ. And that's why he says here that there are no ethnic and religious barriers. They're gone away. There are no longer Greek or Jews. They're no longer circumcised and uncircumcised. Cultural barriers are gone away. There are no longer barbarians and warlike Scythians. Social economic barriers gone away. They're no longer slaves and free. As Christians, We often stand on different sides on public policy and issues. Eight out of ten traditional churches still are racially identifiable. Christians still argue over church polity and power. And Paul speaks to us, urging us as people of God to clothe ourselves with the grace that is characteristic of Christ. To live our lives as Christians would, interacting with one another in a way which would promote peace through unity since we should love each other and all people. Now Paul is teaching here, so he gets pretty specific. The godly characteristics with the Colossians are to clothe themselves with in their relationships with others include a heartfelt compassion, love in action, kindness, humbleness gentleness, and long-suffering. But Paul goes on. He says, you must forbear. The Colossians are to put on the grace of God by forbearing or tolerating one another, even through the differences that remain and that sometimes will disturb the harmony. They are to forgive. The Colossians are to put on the grace of God by forgiving each other when one has a complaint against another, just as Christ forgave them and just as Christ forgives us. The Colossians are to love just as we are. We are to put on the crown of grace by Christ by putting on love, which brings about perfect harmony. Paul is teaching and imploring these Colossians, saying, You're Christians. You must live your life as Christ would by letting the peace which Christ brought to the body rule in the body, in the church. After all, they were still one body in Christ. Paul exhorts the Colossians to become 
a thankful group of people for all the blessings of God. Paul understood something that we may not understand today, and that is our differences and our divisions can only be unified through the spirit and the love of God. Paul urged the Colossians to let the word of Christ richly dwell within them as they wisely teach and admonish one another. Paul knew that when we sing inspired psalms and hymns and sing songs and give thanks to God, it brings us together, it unifies us in love of the Father and it becomes easier for us to love each other. Paul ends this lesson with the timeless challenge that is good then and now. Paul urges the Colossians to do all things in their lives, both word and deed, in a way which is consistent with the character, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give thanks to God through the Father, through him. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. <laughs>